Welcome back to another example from chapter 9. We've now seen three different examples so far. Um, this is going to be the first where there are multiple terms on at least one of the sides of the torque equation. So either two clockwise torques or two counterclockwise torques, depending on where we choose our axis. And so we want to make sure we recognize how that does not affect our strategy or process. It just means that there's more things we want to keep track of. So just as with the previous three examples, we have our real picture. If we don't have it given to us, we can draw it into our notes as a separate picture. We also want to look at the forces specifically in a free body diagram. So we have this three kilogram block pushing down. So we'll call that the weight of the block. And that's equal to the mass of the block times g, which in this case is 3 times 9.8. And so it's 29.4 newtons. We also have the weight of the board itself. This is a board that has a mass of 4 kilograms, so we want to include that as well. So it's the weight fg of the board. That's also going to be mass times gravity, but in that case it's 4 times 9.8 or 39.2 newtons. We have two separate supports, so we'll call this support number one, and this is support two. And we want to include those forces upwards. They're both pushing up on the board, so F1 and F2. And to be clearer for ourselves, this is the force diagram for the board itself. And that's what we've been caring about, and it's just worth making sure we recognize that it's all of the possible forces acting on this board, everything that's touching it and gravity. We also need the torque equation, uh, the torque diagram, and then we'll get to the equation. So torque diagram, we've been using the same process each time for this one. The first step is we draw the beam or the bar or the board. And so that's a flat board here. Eventually it won't be flat. Then we choose our axis. Extremely, extremely important. We can choose anywhere on the board, really. But the best choices are along one of these two unknown supports. The last two examples, I've chosen the one that's on the edge of the board. Just to mix things up and to make it really clear that there's no single correct answer, I'm going to choose the axis at support number one, which is not at the edge of the board, but rather somewhere along the way. The next thing that we want to do is draw in where the forces are acting with arrows. So this block here is to the left of support one. It's not fully at the edge, but it's the block, and the block force is 29.4 newtons. Remember, we drew the free body diagram first so we could calculate that, and now in our torque diagram we just care about the information that will go into our equation. If we continue along the board, this is where our axis is. Further past the axis, we at some point get to the halfway point for the board. That is where the force of gravity on the board itself will be acting, the 39.2 newtons. And then way at the far end of the board, that's where support 2 is located. And so F2 will be put there, pointing up, because it's pushing up on the board. The next step is the distances. Remember, these distances are absolutely relative to the axis that we've drawn and not just generic distances between each other. So this 29.4 newtons, if the support is 0.9 meters away and we have this other 0.7 meters away, this 0.7 is relative to the support that we have chosen as our axis. So it is the exact number that we want here. For the weight of the board, we're trying to get the distance between the support and the weight of the board. The force of gravity is acting right in the center of the board. It would be 2 meters from either end. But because this support is already 0.9 meters away, this will be 1.1 meters between where the axis is and where the force of gravity is located. And then the last one here, from one support to the other support, 
It's not the full four meters of the board itself. The 0.9 is the distance from the edge to the support one, and the remaining 3.1 meters is the distance between these two supports. So four minus 0.9 is 3.1 meters. And then the last step to our torque diagram is the direction. So this is the clockwise versus counterclockwise direction. And this is where we have our first example, and certainly not our last, where there's going to be multiple torques that are acting in the same sense. The weight of gravity compared to where this axis is, if we were to hold the axis, the board in place at the axis, and this were the only force acting, it would cause rotation in the clockwise direction. Every time we're deciding this, we're not flipping a coin, we're not guessing, we are saying, look at where this arrow is. If it has to make a circular kind of motion around the axis, there's only one possibility in any given situation. The 29.4 newtons is on the other side of the axis that we chose. In order for it to circle around the axis, it has to be going in the counterclockwise sense. And then this force two points up and relative to the axis, if it were trying to go around the axis, it would also be a counterclockwise torque. So when we write our torque equation, all of the clockwise torques are equal to all of the counterclockwise torques. We will now have two terms on the right side based on where we chose our axis. All right, so the clockwise torques, we have the 39.2 39.2 newtons, and the distance associated with that force is the 1.1 meters. And then for the counterclockwise torques, we have this force, 29.4 newtons, and the distance associated with that force is 0.7 meters. And then we just have to add a second separate term, the, ten, uh, the force from support two, and the distance associated with that is the 3.1 meters. So to clean this up a little bit, on the left side, 43.12 newton meters, and on the right side, 20.58 newton meters plus 3.1 times the unknown force. So this time there's going to be two steps of math, but not more difficult than what we've seen before. We have to subtract the 20.58 newton meters from both sides. So then on the side, and I'm going to switch just to black now, on the left side now we just have 22.54 and on the right side this went away so we just have 3.1 times the force that we're looking for. So if we divide both sides by 3.1 we have 22.54 over 3.1 that's going to equal our unknown force and so when we do that calculation we will get 7.27 newtons. So 7.27 newtons or 7.3 newtons are both fine. All right, that's one of our unknown forces. The other force is going to come from our other equation we have available. We've already used the clockwise torques equal the counterclockwise torques, but what we've also started to need every time is that the net force is equal to zero. That is also a requirement for static friction, and it's also an equation available to us. That means that we add these two forces that are pointing in the same direction, we'll subtract 29.4 because it points opposite of those, we'll subtract 39.2 because it also points opposite, all that adds up to zero. So because we're looking for our unknown force one, we have to solve for it. So we'll add the 29.4 to both sides. We'll add the 39.2 to both sides and we'll subtract off the 7.27 on both sides. So our force then is 61.33 newtons for the left support. 
Now, it's worth noting that we should be thinking about whether these answers make sense every time. I haven't set aside um, commentary on that in the first couple of examples. But if we think about where this block is and where the board is located, if things were just a little bit different, this could easily, this left support could easily be acting like a seesaw, and this support too isn't really doing all that much at all. So if we compare this setup to example 9a, it should make sense that this far support that is really just kind of partially holding up the board is really not pushing all that hard, only 7 or 8 newtons, and that that middle looking support, the one that is uh, acting kind of as a balance between the two force of gravity down, that should be a much larger force because it really is doing the majority of the effort of keeping things balanced and keeping things um, organized. So these kinds of ideas of checking whether the force being bigger or smaller than other forces, whether the distance being bigger or smaller than other distances, these kinds of checks are going to be really useful moving forward to make sure that your answer feels reasonable to you. So we'll see plenty more examples uh, coming up for example, or for chapter nine. So I will see you in those other videos.